G'day guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jaden and I do a trip report every Thursday. I'm at Adelaide Airport and today I'm flying Qantas 737 Economy Class from Adelaide to Perth and then onwards to Singapore, there'll be another video. Now let's go in and check in. Adelaide Airport is hustling and bustling this morning. It's now the morning rush for check-in. Many of the passengers, including myself, are flying to the East Coast or Perth and then connecting onwards to overseas. I was in a priority queue today for about 15 minutes. Afterwards, I went to security, which was really quiet by the time I got there. Many people have already gone through security. I still got time for a quick break here before my flight, so I'm going to do that right now at the Qantas Adelaide Club. I got access today with my Qantas Gold status. So here's the buffet area in the lounge. You can make yourself a toasty, a pancake. There's also salad and hot food like scrambled eggs and baked beans. Our flight later is a relatively long domestic flight. So I'm gonna take away some magazines. So here's my first breakfast for the day, scrambled eggs, baked beans, and a glass of sparkling water. Hello there, welcome to the Qantas Adelaide Lounge shower room. Here's a quick tour. So this is a very large shower room. Very nice, I love the wooden material on the wall. You've got a hair dryer there and a charging point. Cool hook. And then you'll find the toilet there and a sharp unit disposal. Your shower space is just here. And you've got three in one shampoo, conditioner and shower gel. So here's our ride to Perth today. It's a 12 year old Qantas Boeing 737-800 Victor Hotel, Victor Zulu Hotel. Delivered to Qantas in October 2009, it was operating under the brand Jet Connect, a subsidiary of Qantas based in New Zealand. It was then transferred to Qantas in Australia in 2016. Hello. Morning, how are you? Good, thank you. Is this your one? Alright, thanks. Hello. Hello. Lovely, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on board, Qantas 737. We've got no Boeing Sky interior today, but we've got TV at every seat. My seat today is 11A, and here's our window seat view. Your captain today, Captain Andrew Stubbs, and joining me in the flight deck is Steve Thomas and Lance Morton. Welcome back at Qantas 01 World Frequent Flight on Qantas Flight 2883 to Perth. Great to have you with us. Lifting off the ground right now is Qantas 670 for Melbourne. And taxiing ahead of us is Jetstar 671 for Sydney.
We just departed from Adelaide Airport, also known as West Beach Airport. From this angle, we can also see Edinburgh and Parafield Airports. Parafield Airport is famous for its flight training schools. Many international airlines, including Cathay Pacific, train their cadet pilots here. So we just made a U-turn, now we can see Adelaide CBD and North Adelaide, both surrounded by parks, and also we can see Adelaide Airport. I'll now quickly go through the seat features with you guys. There's no cut hook, there's a TV, a USB port, a tray table, you can move it back and forth but you can't fold it. Further down you can find a standard seat pocket. Your leg room or sit pitch is about 30 inches, it's kind of testing my limit on this 3 hour flight. You can find power sockets underneath between every two seats. Every economy seat also comes with a comfortable, adjustable headrest. For some reason, in-flight entertainment isn't really working today for the whole flight. The only thing available is your flight map. Free high-speed Wi-Fi is available on this flight. I can watch YouTube without problem. cabin crew are now serving us breakfast. Today we've got two options, a hot breakfast option or a yogurt box option. I went for the hot breakfast option, let's dig into it. So we've got mashed potato, baked beans, spinach, scrambled eggs and a sausage. For drinks I went for a black tea and a bottle of water. It's a pretty generous portion for a domestic flight and it was a delicious breakfast. If you're enjoying this video so far, please leave a like, comment down below and share this video with your friends. And most importantly, I upload a new trip report every week, so be sure to hit that subscribe and bell button so you won't miss out again. Thank you, thank you. Hello there, welcome to the Qantas 737 lavatory. Here's a quick lavatory tour. Very tiny here. Uh, sit down. Got a little bit of leg room, you've got mirrors everywhere, mood lighting, and two cookbooks. Local time here in WA now, it's just gone 740. Been a pleasant flight across the WA today. Hope you enjoyed the flight. Thanks for choosing the policy travels. We're about to begin our descent into Perth Airport, so let's quickly conclude this trip port with Qantas right here, right now. Our journey today started at Adelaide Airport. The check-in staff there are always really friendly. I love them so much. The Qantas Club Lounge is good as usual. They've got several big shower rooms should you need it, and a breakfast buffet is quite delicious. On board this X Jet Connect aircraft, we've got TV but no entertainment today, which was a shame for a three-hour flight, but thankfully there was free Wi-Fi, and also I brought some magazines with me from the lounge. I usually fly Qantas domestic, like Adelaide to Melbourne or Sydney, so it doesn't really go over two hours and I usually find the leg room okay but this time round it's three hours and it was really testing my limit but thankfully I didn't have a middle seat neighbor today so I could spread my legs a bit otherwise the seat itself is actually quite comfortable it's got double seat back padding and a comfortable headrest for the hot breakfast box it was quite delicious and very good portion as well and our cabin crew today were friendly overall today a good flight with Qantas much better if they could have the entertainment sorted now for your information flying between Perth and Adelaide is really expensive on Qantas it's $329 one way. It's one of the many examples where it's cheaper to fly to Asia or even Greece if you book it at the right time. So guys, thank you so much for watching today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and the view that we're seeing right now. Please like, comment and share. And please, please, please subscribe if you haven't done so. Each and every of your action will improve my YouTube algorithm and help the growth of my channel. If you like, you can also follow me on my social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and also the app of the year, Be Real. If you want to make direct impacts into funding my flights, you can do so via PayPal Me or Patreon. Please visit the links in the description for more information. After landing in Perth, I have a connecting flight to Singapore. I'll have the link for that trip report in the description. Now please enjoy the landing and approach into Perth, and I'll do a Q&A after. See you later, bye bye.
Australian Southern Air and Waterways on which we live, work and fly. We also like to pay respect to orders past, present and emerging. The local time here is 5 minutes past 8. We are arriving at Bay 13. Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the seatbelt sign is off. As always, smoking, vaping and the use of e-cigarettes is not permitted while disembarking or throughout the terminal. Please take care when opening the overhead lockers as baggage may have moved and could fall out. Before leaving, ensure you check your seat and seat pocket for any personal items. Please continue to wear a face mask as you exit the aircraft and take all used masks and wipes with you. If you can reach your phone, you may turn off flight mode now. On behalf of all of us here at Qantas and One World, thank you for choosing to fly with us. If you're visiting Perth, we hope you enjoy your stay and of course to those returning, welcome home. For those passengers travelling onwards on Qantas flight 1652 to Brew, if you could please proceed to gate 8 in terminal 4. Thank you. Hello there, welcome back to another Q&A. And Lily is here with me. And the first question today is, with all the travelling that you do, how do you keep your phone bill under control? I actually like this question a lot because it's something different to the bunch that I got and um, I'm happy to just, uh, I'm happy to share. So during COVID, when, when COVID started, I'm in Australia a bit more. So I switched from Optus day plan. They used to have a day plan, which costs $2 and you get 500 megabytes. So about $60 per day. Anyway, I switched from that to a month plan because obviously I'm staying in Australia for a longer term and I won't be going overseas. So month plan made more sense in terms of cost and the amount of data I'm gonna get from it. So I switched to Vodafone for about two years for $35 per month. And I was getting, I can't remember, like 30 gigabytes per month uh, with rollover. But when I started traveling this year, it got expensive because I'm using roaming. Um, um, it's extra $5 per day when you go overseas, which isn't too bad. So last year in July, I think, when I went to New Zealand, actually, I think May or June, I went to New Zealand. I went there for five days. It cost me $25 on top of the 35 I was paying. So not too bad, actually. But this year I traveled a lot more. And at one stage I was even stuck in Singapore for like an extra week. So that month, my phone bill actually racked up to like over a hundred dollars. So I'm like, yeah, I'm done with Vodafone and month plan. I'm traveling so much. I'm not in Australia all the time. So it made more sense for me while I'm in Australia to use a day plan. Optus now has a plan that costs me $1 per day and I get one gigabyte, which is so good. So I only pay that $1 whenever I'm in Australia. When I'm in overseas, I don't pay nothing. So while I'm overseas, what I do, I buy a SIM card from Hong Kong because they're just so cheap. It's way cheaper than roaming. It's cheaper than uh, getting a SIM card at your destination. For example, uh, I just went to Italy, uh, Europe, and I uh, bought a SIM card in Hong Kong to use there for 10 days and it cost me $12 Australian, which is really good. And I got unlimited data. I don't know why, but like buying SIM cards in Hong Kong, ouch, <laughs> it's so cheap. The main restriction though, buying a Hong Kong SIM card is that you can't use TikTok because not that Hong Kong banned TikTok like mainland China, but TikTok banned Hong Kong, like the other way around. Whenever you use a Hong Kong SIM card, wherever you go, you can't use TikTok, which is annoying because I'm kind of addicted to TikTok. She's, she's not gonna attack me. Next question. When are you going to attempt Air Canada route back off the bus and swoop? I don't even know what, what swoop is. And all Flair Airlines. I know Flair Airlines, it's a new startup airline, I think. Uh, whenever I go to Canada, I guess, I, I actually might go there April next year because I've got a friend from Hong Kong who's going to go to Vancouver for uni exchange and I might go visit him. No! Next question. How do you use passports when travelling as a dual national? 
So I think I've answered this before, but I'm gonna go through it again. I've got a UK and a Hong Kong passport. So if I go to the UK, obviously I'm gonna use my Hong Kong, sorry, my UK passport, because uh, I could use the the machine instead of going through the tr tr traditional desk. It's, it's faster, it's easier. Um, when I go to America, I use my UK passport because I don't need to get a visa. With my Hong Kong passport, I would need to get a visa. Um, when I go to Taiwan, it's the same story, UK passport. Australia, I use my UK only because my visa is linked to it. I'm just thinking of an occasion that I would use my Hong Kong passport. Ouch. Um, most countries where they require a stamp, I would use a Hong my Hong Kong passport because um, most of the time I actually use my UK passport and I'm afraid one day I'm going to run out of stamp space. It's just being so naughty. Go away. What airline would you recommend in terms of budget and quality? Oh my god, she's coming back to attack me. Oh no, oh no, oh no, don't. Oh, it's a really subjective, objective? Subjective, I think, subjective uh, question. <laughs> um, it, um, well, you also need to give me more details, Hayden, like region, for example. Let's say Australia. The main players are Virgin Australia, Qantas, Jetstar, and soon Bonza. Um, I would say Virgin's actually really, really good because normally they charge about the same price as Jetstar, but then it's not a low cost airline yet. Um, within the next few months, you're gonna get Wi Fi back, um, but it's not free, um, but at least it's an option. Um, you have free entertainment on your mobile device. Uh, free coffee, tea, and lounge access and all that if you've got membership, which is really good. Why do you fly so much? Because simply I like flying and I make a living out of it, like uploading YouTube. Oh, excuse me, I was going to burp. And YouTube pay me for that. So that's it for the Q&A today. I hope you enjoyed watching. And she's being so naughty today. And I'll see you next week. Uh, actually, no, maybe tomorrow or the next few days because this month I'm uploading more videos. So, bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned.